This is Salem, Massachusetts, home to the infamous Salem Witch Trials and the Halloween capital of the United States. Nearly one million tourists made the trek to this small town last year to celebrate one of the biggest holidays of the year. So today, I made my way to Salem to check out just what makes this city the hallmark for spooky season. Live witch trials, extremely haunted buildings, and a lot of people in costume. This is gonna be a video you don't wanna miss. We are currently in downtown Boston, Massachusetts, getting ready to take an Uber over to Salem. My nose is a little congested, but we're gonna make it happen. We're heading to Salem. We got a lot to do today. All right, so I just got dropped off by the Uber. I'm gonna go hit this coffee shop up real quick and then I'm gonna explore. Yeah. <laughs> Could it be? He's from uh, Utah originally. Yeah, where are you from? From Ohio. 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 And who's the video for? It's my YouTube channel. Your kids? All right, my kids. Welcome to Salem. Hit that subscribe button and that bell ding dong. Get a notification every time he throws up a That's channel. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you guys. That. That was great. We're heading to a haunted museum now. I'm not sure where it is. I'm kind of just exploring right now. There's a lot of uh, a lot of shops around here I need to check out too. Can't get over that, that was great. So once I got to the Gallo Hills Theater Show, they let me know straight away that I could not record in the building. I was able to sneak a few videos in for you guys, but don't be too disappointed because it was pretty much just a tourist trap anyways. Now I'm going to check out some of the shops around town. It is getting super hot out, so I'm gonna throw this on so I'm not sweating my balls off and get into the Halloween spirit. That is more like it. Right now, I'm heading to the Salem Witch Memorial. I don't know what that is, but we're gonna go find out. Got a sticker. So this is a 25 mile walk. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah, about three o'clock in the morning we're gonna get back. Everyone cool with that? <laughs> <laughs> Today we're gonna hit Trent Tennis one of the coolest spots in Salem. Uh, Salem is a destination people come to now uh, all year long. It's not just an October thing, honestly. We might have some other groups that we're gonna run into because it is October. There's 70 different touring groups here in Salem. I always get groups of people from two spots. Pennsylvania, perfect, and Ohio. See what I mean? Isn't that something? It's awesome. New York, because I might need them for traffic control. Beautiful. So I always like to stop here and give people a little history on Salem and how we got here. Puritans came here with Roger Conant and settled Salem in 1626. Puritans were very strict and pious people. They didn't like the rules. They didn't think they were strict enough in Europe. So they wanted to come here and create their own way of life. A typical Puritan woman only lived to be about 32, and they had between 8 and 13 children back in the day. They were quiet people. A lot of them, when accused and convicted, didn't even speak up for themselves. I want you to look behind me at this chapel, and over to your right, you see this parking lot. This is the second most paranormal spot in all of Salem. This tour is pretty depressing, honestly. It's a depressing tour. Salem's the only place in the world, I think, where you can put 20 innocent people to death and have 25 gift shops commemorating that event. That's what we do. <laughs> That's how we roll here in Salem. Some of these headstones, you'll see a skeleton 
and on either side of the face you see wings. Skeleton meant that the person has left the physical world, and the two wings on either side on the top of these headstones mean that they've flown to their spiritual destination. Death head is what they call That's on a million t-shirts here in Salem. One of the first persons accused and convicted was a woman by the name of Sarah Good. Sarah Good had no social standing here in Salem. She had no support from anybody, really. She was an easy mark to accuse and convict of witchcraft and sentenced to die at the doctor's ledge. She was thrown inside of this jail after being convicted. Two weeks after being put inside of the old jail that sat in this spot, she gave birth to a baby girl named Mercy Good. Mercy Good only lived for about two weeks and she passed away. Sarah Good was loaded onto an ox drawn cart and she was paraded all the way up to Proctor's Ledge where she was put to death. There's always stuff coming out of this complex. It's all office condominiums and people are always saying that they felt like somebody touched them or they felt a cold or warm breeze against the backs of their legs. All sorts of strange stuff comes out of this space. Very spooky spot, this place right here. And it's always got openings if you want to open up an office building. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, suggest that. But. that if you want but we also want to hear talk about Giles Corey. Giles Corey was a gentleman that was accused of witchcraft back in the day. We know that all 19 of these people were brought into the courtroom and asked how do you plead? Every single one of them said they were innocent. They were all found guilty during the hysteria that existed here in Salem. When you were convicted of a crime back in the day of the Puritans the state would move in and take everything you owned. When Giles Corey was brought into the courtroom and asked how do you plead? He knew no matter what he said he'd be found guilty. Giles Corey had a thousand acre farm and five children here in Salem. He wanted his kids to have what he owned. When he was asked in court how do you plead? He wouldn't answer the question. If he doesn't answer the question, let's bring him outside and torture an answer out of him. They put him down in a two foot deep ditch and put planks on top of him and a giant boulder on top of that. The next day, all of Salem came back. George Corrin, the sheriff, looked down at him inside that pit and said, how do you plead? He still wouldn't answer the question. But he said two famous words, more wait. And for three consecutive days, that's all he would say. By the end of the third day, he died. And he's buried in an unmarked grave somewhere within a quarter mile of where we're standing with those boulders still on top of him. But he was never convicted of witchcraft. He died before that happened. So the people in Salem believed that he was able to keep the property that he owned because he was never convicted. He died before that happened. And this wall you see right here, was a seawall back in the day. The coffins are only probably about the same level as these cars are that are buried inside of that place. There are 347 stones up there. We're going to go past a bunch of them. But they think close to 5,000 bodies could be up inside of that place. A lot of them would have been put in mass graves for sure, That no doubt. There's a gentleman inside of this place who came here on the Mayflower. John Hathorn's in there. There's a lot of really cool things to walk around in inside of the Charter Street Burial Point. This house right here was the home of Nathaniel Hawthorne back in the day. Charter Street Burial Point right here. Most historic the cemetery, the oldest cemetery in all of Salem. If you look all the way down to that wall right down there, beyond that wall was a seawall back in the 1600s. In front of the wall, you'll see a big, huge tree. That tree is one of the coolest things in Salem. It's called a lightning tree. That tree has been documented to be hit by lightning over 10 times. And at the base of that tree, there's a headstone. And it's a headstone of a gentleman by the name of Caleb Pickman. And written right on his stone, it says how he died, struck by lightning. Wow. That itself is worth walking around inside of this place. The memorial that we're standing in, and it's cool that we're actually able to stop here, there's one of these cantilever benches for each one of the 20 put to death during the witch trials. And we know they're all hung at Proctor's Ledge. People are always leaving stuff on these stones. And if people are just paying their respects, it all is, it's all it is. A lot of them, though, are, are um, ancestors. We have a lot of them that come here. If you were related to any of these people memorialized here, you'd be a 12th or 13th removed ancestor of them. These trees, there's five of them inside of the memorial. They're called the Black Locust Tree, and they believe this is the type of tree that they hung those those poor souls on up at Proctor's Ledge. How did it all go away? It went away almost as quickly as it came. The governor of Massachusetts left. He went up into Maine to help with the dispute between the French and the Indians. Now the governor came back and when he did, his own wife was accused of witchcraft. He told the sheriff to stop arresting people, let them out of jail, st stop, stop convicting them. They're accusing my own wife of witchcraft and I'm the governor of Massachusetts. And before you knew it, the witch trials just faded away. By the way, 25 miles, you guys don't even look winded. You look pretty good. So much deep history here in Salem. I hope you all have lots more time in your hand to check out um, uh, all the things here in Salem. All right, so I just finished up with the tour. I'm getting ready to head to Proctor's Ledge now where they hung the witches. And then after that, we're gonna be going to an actual witch trial. We got a little bit before that, so let's go. So that is the rock right there. People are definitely putting a lot of flowers. Sage, candles, tech decks. Not much to it. There was not much to that, but that's okay. We got about a 20 minute walk back to downtown Salem now, and we are going to watch a witch trial. These dogs are barking. 
so not surprising at all they did not let me record in the witch trial show either my verdict for these gallow hill shows they are definitely meant for tourists but if you're into that sort of thing maybe it's something to check out the tickets weren't too expensive they were only like 15 16 bucks per show after that i checked out one more shop with a bunch of cool unique items from tv shows and pretty much headed back to the hotel for the night so guys that is pretty much it for my time in salem massachusetts for halloween pretty cool experience i can't even lie there was a lot of different things to do and if you guys are into the halloween stuff definitely something to go check out if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to drop a thumbs up and comment what you guys dressed up for this year for halloween i know you guys enjoy the travel videos a lot so let me know where you guys want to see me go next there are so many different places to travel and explore and check out and i want to hit as many of them as possible thank you guys so much for watching again drop a like on the video and subscribe i appreciate you guys and i will see you next week for a brand new video peace hit that subscribe button